My passion, as you can tell, is James Bond. And it's because there's something that sparks us when you think about James Bond. Maybe, maybe it's the fashion. Maybe it's the, the, the Bond girls. Maybe it's the different gadgets, the excitement, the fact that we can escape for a moment. That's why it connects to all of these generations as we have generations at the different tables. But tonight, we're going to escape together because no matter how you got here, no matter what type of Bond film you want, is it Dalton, is it Connery, is it Lazenby, Rosnan, Craig? Heck, it doesn't matter. Roger Moore, I'm looking at you, Kyle. There's something for you to connect with, but here's a journey that was taken of a celebration because tonight, over there on the table, is a book. And the book didn't get here by itself. It took two individuals to bring it. So I want to invite up to the stage to talk about the journey of creating this book about Bond in the Bahamas. Simon Firth, the author, and of course, Martijn Mulder. Please take the stage. Let's hope this is an active mic over here. What do you think? What are our chances? They'll be singing later. Relax. Not enough gin and tonics in me. All right, gentlemen. Uh, we have an audience here, but we've got we've to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, and no, this is not the man with the golden gun. Not that elephant. This is a different one. Um, this book that's sitting on the table, that's sitting in everybody's hands, you had a choice. You just came out with a book about James Bond in Italy. So why did you consider traveling to the Bahamas? Uh, well, you know what? I, uh, I'd written the, uh, the first book. Thank you. I'd written the first book, uh, Code de Zure, uh, which, was, uh, which just came, kind of came out of the blue. Uh, it kind of went uh, down okay when we published it. I was invited back. Uh, no Time to Die was uh, imminently to be uh, released, imminently. And it was about 25% of the way through writing that, uh, that I wanted to, uh, to get a, a, a perfected writing format and a perfected writing ability, as far as the ability goes, uh, to do justice by this book. Uh, I then finished Italy, I wrote uh, another manuscript, and it was in uh, June of last year that I, uh, I embarked upon this project. And I want to get this straight, because this is all about accuracy. Yes, it's a book, but this is about people. It's not just about the two of you. Yeah, correct that uh, you interviewed 30 individuals for this book? Uh, I probably spoke to actually at least 50, to be honest. Or, uh, yeah, 50. You're here to correct me all night, I hope. Because I'll get it wrong every time. Uh, and by the way, as we're talking about the 30 people, we have some sitting here tonight, don't we? Uh, yes, in fact, we should have had a lot more. But I think COVID and various ailments have, uh, have, have, have laid them to rest. We have, we're missing David McGrath. Uh, we're missing uh, dive master uh, Gavin McKinney, who couldn't be with us uh, tonight. But we do have uh, Stan Bocus, uh, who was the, uh, the manager at the time of uh, the Buena Vista. Uh, we have uh, Catherine uh, Solomon, who helped dispel some rumors uh, for a certain location, and a few more. Wonderful. And the nice thing that you'll see when you do read this, and some of you have actually had a sneak peek, you're going to find that it's a very unique weaving and I've called it to you like almost like a cloth. You weave the story of people with locations. And Martin, you've been the location guy you know, for many years. What is it that fascinates you about Bond locations? Uh, as I often say, I'm just fascinated by historical places, uh, places where things have taken place. And uh, it's just wonderful to be somewhere and to think, wow, um, 300 years ago this happened or 50 years ago that happened. And uh, because of my love for Bond, and uh, in my case, my first Bond film was Moonraker. And uh, as we all know, Moonraker was all over the world. Uh, so for locations, uh, that was very interesting. And I just started to uh, figure out where all that was filmed. It's amazing too, because one of the things some of you have experienced this, this week, uh, we've taken several fans, many fans actually, and some of the people that worked on the film to different places. Um, in marketing terms, when you think about James Bond, nostalgia plays a very heavy role. And I remember uh, Luciana and uh, Martine, when you connected on the different locations, especially Luciana Palmyra, and you looked out and you became very wistful, um, we get that same way. Of course, you have a different point of view, of course, 
you were there. But for us, it brings us back to that moment of Bond. Simon, when you're writing this, I mean, are you getting into the mind of a Bond fan or are you down to business, I'm an author, I need to get this done? I am probably uh, business first and pleasure second, if you're calling it like that. Uh, but the, I think for me, what was uh, important about doing The Bahamas was that film James Bond was born here. Uh, yes, we know that uh, Dr. No was uh, the first James Bond film. That was predominantly filmed in Jamaica. It came out in 1962. But the film James Bond began, it was, it was conceived here in uh, 1957. Four gentlemen came together um, uh, to, to conceive uh, an underwater James Bond film, which became Thunderball. And some of the relatives of those people are with us today. So the, the, the personality of the, or the personal connections with this book, more than probably any other book, maybe other than Jamaica, uh, Jamaica it's, uh, it, again, it was one of those subjects that I just had to be in the right place to do uh, justice by it. And justice you did. I mean, it's, an, it's a phenomenal read. Um, I received it a few months ago, and one of the things I said to both of these gentlemen is that it doesn't read like a Google Maps. This is not Google Maps of James Bond. It's not about uh, walk here, find this cube, and turn right as the crows fly. That would be fine. It's something that's very personal. And Martine, um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is this is about detective work. I mean, you took us on a tour for the last two days. Is there a particular process? Is there, uh, you know, finding the right location, making mistakes, as you've said, is it trial and error? Well, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting process. And a, a lot of these Thunderbolt locations obviously were found years ago. Uh, and when I say found, I mean uh, found by the fans, uh, those n not involved with the productions. And, um, and one of the, you, you say, uh, mistakes. I mean, yes, uh, for years I thought that the Coral Harbor Hotel did not exist or was either demolished or uh, until somebody pointed out, no, it's at Coral Harbor. Makes sense, doesn't it? So yes, it's an interesting uh, um, process. And, uh, and you're absolutely right in saying that this book is not really a travel guide as much as the uh, earlier books were. I used to always make these books just to bring people to the locations. And when Simon started his journey, uh, he had so many, he talked to so many people and it became much more um, making of the James Bond films in the Bahamas. So that's, there was one moment that I told him, I said, I know you would like to call it Bahamas, but we are going to call it filming James Bond in the Bahamas because that's what it's about. It makes perfect sense. And I'm gonna put Simon a little bit on the spot, it's what I do. He and I have known each other for long enough for me to do this in public, in front of you, right? Um, when you were writing this, and I was reading a particular piece, could you tell us the story of the Never Say Never Again training house? Because I'm telling you, and I don't want to give any spoilers away, when you read this portion, it doesn't read like anything they just described. It reads like a James Bond novel. Simon? So the location that uh, David refers to is the one which happens at the very, very beginning of Never Say Never Again. It's, we call it the training mission house. Uh, Never Say Never Again opens up. We see James Bond were running through what we presume to be a South American country. Uh, he storms a house, he kills a bunch of the opposition, saves the girl and gets stabbed in the chest for his troubles. Back in 1983, this house uh, was already derelict. It had already been abandoned. And I was just fascinated and curious because uh, majority of the locations around the world, they are fairly well documented, at least the film ones, if not book and this, that and the other. But this one really had not come to light. Uh, Martin had uh, some information that it still did exist. I came here last August uh, to see a few people and I really wanted to get some, some imagery. The journey is in the book, uh, but, but this particular location uh, was absolutely the most difficult location to, uh, to sort out, both from the point of view of getting imagery and also to find out who built it, uh, why was it abandoned, who does it belong to now, what's going to happen to it. And it's a, a huge, huge house with a massive story. One of the uh, ladies who uh, is with us uh, tonight, <coughs> uh, Catherine Solomon, she helped uh, dispel some of the rumors. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I would say that probably I started looking into this uh, location around about July of last year, and I finished it in November. And it was a solid piece of work all the way through. It's amazing. And by the way, uh, as you read this, and again, I don't want to give too much, you should read the book. Uh, it's, it's you hacking away through a jungle, not quite knowing if you were going to return or not. Um, 
having your significant other waiting in a in a truck somewhere else. But but you'll have to read it to see hear the ending. Uh, one thing I wanted to address to everybody: some some of you, I was overhearing you talk about you're holding up the book. Some of you received signatures. You were talking about the design, the look of the book, the cover. And one of the things about James Bond is the movies are always beautifully designed. They're beautifully crafted. So Mark Time, you know, one of the things in designing this and in, in pulling together the pictures, talk to us a little bit about the process. I mean, that it's not just about dumping images in a book and hoping for the best. Well, this was really, uh, we were really helped by the fact that a lot of the people we, well, Simon talked to uh, had uh, behind the scenes photos that were either taken by themselves or taken by the neighbor or, so it was, um, uh, we, we ended up with a lot of uh, um, good material. And um, yeah, it's when you start designing something, I always buy a few magazines to, to uh, get ins inspired by uh, whatever is, is done these days. And, and, and it, it led all to this. And I think it's a beautiful uh, uh, end result. It is. Please. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, we, we have a cover. I'm, a, I'm actually also very, very interested in uh, the old film posters, the, uh, the ones which were hand drawn or hand painted. And when I started writing for uh, Martin, I basically fell into a, a, an already existing relationship between uh, Martin Mulder and a, a US-based artist called uh, Jeff Marshall. And I have long loved this man's work. And, and when I asked him to, uh, to put some thoughts and ideas to get, uh, together for this one, uh, without sort of being too prescriptive from an artist's point of view, I mean, <laughs> The cover is sublime, and it's one of those uh, one of those reasons why I just uh, I would I prefer everyone to ignore the adage: don't judge a book by its cover. Just buy the book for the cover. <laughs> well said. And you should offer posters at some point. It's an idea. It's an idea. Yeah, that, that won't attract any attention. Um, <laughs> so, gentlemen, you had choices. I was on some of the phone calls leading up to this celebration. Uh, this could have been a book launch that you did by. Zoom, StreamYard, one of the other, you know, <laughs> through a computer essentially like we've been doing for the last two and a half years and you were very passionate about making sure that this was an in-person celebration with events, locations, Bond fans, celebrities and VIP guests. Why? Oh gosh, well that question actually uh, probably should have been uh, phrased as in, did you imagine that you would ever be here? I did not. You can not. change it. <laughs> this man did. Uh, I had written this book pretty much in isolation between June and December of last year. Uh, he had a lot of work on his plates. He didn't want to be uh, distracted by uh, all of his other projects. And so I wrote in isolation until December, and uh, I think David and I had a couple of conversations, and my idea would have been for just the three of us uh, to pop into uh, the Bahamas, make a few videos, um, meet and greet the uh, Ministry of Tourism, and that would be that. And I remember saying this very same, uh, this very same suggestion to Martin. I remember these words very clearly. He said, no, 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 Simon. I see it as being much bigger than that. <laughs> Did I say, yeah, I said that. Um, yes, uh, but that was mainly because you already uh, talked to um, so many people uh, like for instance, King Arison, and uh, I had the pleasure of, of having a, a telephone conversation with Luciana. Um, and because we, we sort of suddenly knew these people, we, the, we, the idea came up of, wait a minute, they're together in that scene in the, in, what's it called? The, the Kiss Kiss Club or something? <laughs> maybe, maybe. What about if we recreate that Kiss Kiss Club? And that's actually how it, how it came about. And, King was up for it, I, I eventually asked Luciana and she thought it was a lovely idea to revisit the, the, the places where she, where she was um, uh, in, in 1965. And we were fortunate enough to, in, to, to uh, get in touch with Martine Beswick as well, uh, so she uh, could also join the celebrations. And one thing we would have loved to have had uh, uh, another guest who was supposed to be here that was Miss Diane Hartford. That was the lady that uh, Sean originally danced with before uh, the Fiona Volpe character cut in the dance, and um, but Diane unfortunately couldn't make it. So that would that would have made the whole thing complete. But I think we did a pretty good job. They did a great job, didn't they, everyone? Right? And they brought us all together. I mean, 
we've been separated for so long. I, I, I remember my wife leaning to me and saying, you know, the locations, everything's wonderful. I'm noticing the magical, magical moments are when people are connecting with other people. You know, to break down that wall and reconnect. So thank you for that. Last question, um, and it's a terrible question. It's a typical journalist question. I'm not a journalist, so I'm just going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> gentlemen, you've just completed this book. And the worst thing somebody could ask you is, what's next? And here I go asking it. What's next? What's the next project? <laughs> Nobody wants to answer. Well, well I, I kind of alluded to that uh, a little bit earlier on, uh, because I'd, I'd written Italy between January and April. There was an idea uh, that Martin wanted to uh, launch uh, another book for another country based on a 50-year anniversary. Uh, but it came, became quite, clearly, quite, uh, quite clear early on uh, that this was not going to happen. But I, I finished this manuscript uh, and then that allowed me to start working on the Bahamas book in June. The next book is the USA. And I'm currently going back to that uh, when I get home to shore this book up with many more interviews. It's currently in a very draft state, but that will be next year, I think. So you'll have to decide, is it San Francisco, New York, or New Orleans, where you... <laughs> no, or Miami? Lots of possibilities. Lots of possibilities. Vegas, that's right. Don't forget about Vegas. JW, you would say that. <laughs> All right, well, listen, Martine, Simon, thank you so much for the book. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you for bringing everybody together. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon and Martine. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.